वेलकम लर्नर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट स्टाम ल्यूविल्स बाउंडरी वैल्यू प्रॉब्लम बेसिकली वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट व्हाट इज द स्टाम ल्यूविल्स बाउंडरी वैल्यू प्रॉब्लम एंड हाउ वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई दिस टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स बाय ऑब्जर्विंग द फॉर्म ऑफ द इक्वेशंस हाउ वी कैन सॉल्व दिस इक्वेशंस एंड व्हाट आर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सोल्यूशंस दिस इक्वेशन प्रोड्यूस एंड व्हाट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फंक्शंस एंड व्हाट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स पैरामीटर्स and uh, we we can see that how we can define these parameters and uh, these functions while we are trying to solve the storm levels boundary value problems we will also see how we can uh, develop uh, fourier series and a technique to expand a function in terms of the uh, these uh, characteristics functions which are produced by this uh, solution of this storm levels boundary value problem okay with this brief uh, introduction let's start we see this is the storm levels problem so basically this is a self adjoint equation where we can see this px is a has a continuous derivative since we need to differentiate it so that it should satisfy this equation so this equation should be well defined for that this px should be uh, differentiable and continuous Uh, similarly qx and rx should be continuous and lambda is the parameter okay so the lambda is a constant but we can choose value and this uh, parameters uh, will get different equations uh, depending on this different values of parameters so when we are going to solve this equation we will see this parameters uh, actually play a major role Uh, while we are going to solve this equation and why it is called um, boundary value problem because uh, with this equation we have this boundary condition we can see this is a mixed boundary condition where the initial point of the interval so this uh, equation is defined in the interval a less than equal to t less than equal to b so in this interval this problem is well defined now so when we are trying to define this boundary value so you, you can see the both the points has been used a and b so that's why we call this mixed boundary value problem so that's why that uh, this problem that means this equation with this boundary conditions is called storm liouville's boundary value problem let's see some examples so see this is the first example where our px is 1 and qx is 0 and rx is 1 and here is the lambda so and this is the boundary condition so this equation is defined for the closed interval uh, 0 comma pi and this is another e equation where this is the mixed boundary condition and this is the equation where we can see so this is your px this is your qx and this is this x square is your rx okay so now we are going to try to solve this boundary value problem which is basically you can also observe so this all this equation are basically self adjoint equations which you can find under storm theory so let's move on here we are trying to solve the first example so let's see how we can solve this now if lambda if our lambda this lambda is zero if lambda is zero so and then obviously y equal to c on plus c2 x and now if you use this boundary conditions you will get y equal to 0 so this is a trivial solutions since we know all homogeneous differential equation satisfied by the trivial solutions so our main motive to solve a differential equation is to find non trivial solutions so no so we are not uh, interested to find this trivial solution we want to find some non trivial solutions so let's move on to the second case where we have taken lambda negative so if lambda equal to negative so if you solve this equation you will get this solution so this is easily solvable these are all linear uh, differential equation so obviously this one is linear differential equation with constant coefficients we can easily solve and we know uh, from our graduation knowledge how we can solve it so we are not going in details of the solution procedure so but, but we want to we are interested in the theory that what are the uh, properties this solutions have so for that we are just Uh, concentrating on the solution so this is your solution for lambda equal lambda less than 0 so when lambda less than 0 you will get this y equal to 
सी ओन प्लस इ टू दि पार माइनस रुट ओवर माइनस लैमडा एक्स प्लस सी टू इ टू दि पार माइनस रुट ओवर माइनस लैमडा एक्स सो दिस इज योर सोल्यूशन नाउ इफ यू यूज दि बाउंड्री कंडिशन यू उल गेट दिस सी ओन प्लस सी टू इक्वल टू जीरो यूल ऑल्सो गेट दिस ओके नाउ इफ सी ओन इ नाउ वी आर ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ सी ओन एंड सी टू नाउ हाउ वी कैन फाइंड आउट सो इफ द सी ऑन सी टू हैव टू नॉन जीरो देन ऑब्वियसली दिस दे हैव टू बी Uh, independent. So if they are independent, if they are independent, then both the solution they are only unique solutions, and that is zero. So we know now that's why we have determined this uh, determinant. Uh, determinant. Now we see this determinant is non-zero. Since this is non-zero for lambda not equal to zero, obviously this is the case for lambda not equal to zero. Therefore, uh, the only option we have that is C one and C two both are zero. Okay. So therefore, here also we are getting y equal to zero, a trivial solutions. So then again, we are trying to find out non-trivial solutions. So let's move to the another case. So we can see lambda can possible have three possible values. Either it is zero, it is negative, or it should be positive. So if lambda is positive, what we have? We have these solutions. Now again, uh, use the boundary condition. Why will you why will use this boundary condition? At y at zero equal to zero, you will get c two equal to zero. Now again, use another boundary condition that y at pi equal to zero. So from there, you get c one into this thing equal to zero. Again, if we have already gotten that c two c two is zero. Again, if c one is also zero, we will lead this will lead to trivial solution that is y equal to zero. We are not interested in that. So since we are trying to find uh, find a non-trivial solution, we are assuming c one is non-zero. So C one is non-zero for non-trivial solution. If C one is non-zero, then this should be zero. So that's why sine of root over lambda into pi this should be zero. And we know the sine of x should be zero if x is equal to n pi. So from there we we have root over lambda equal to n where n is any integers. Okay. So from there we have lambda equal to n square. So root over lambda is n. So lambda equal to n square. Now This is your lambda. So for each lambda equal to n square, you will get a solution. This, where the these c n's are non-zero. So this is your final solution. Y equal to c n sine n x. So each of them is a solution. For each n, for each lambda, you will get a solution c n. So what will the ultimate solution? The final solution will be summation of them. Okay. So this is a uh, example where we have solved Tom Liouville's boundary value problem. We'll use this solution in the next theory and see how this solution can provide us uh, various uh, interesting results. Okay. So what is characteristic values and characteristic function? We have already seen the examples. The values of the parameter lambda for which there is non-trivial solutions of the Tom Liouville's problem. So we have already seen that lambda. If you take any value of lambda, it will always not lead to non-trivial solution. In the last case, we have seen the last example. We have seen that for lambda greater than zero, we have only find out non-trivial solution. So th for the values of lambda for which we have non-trivial solutions, those values of lambda are called characteristic values, and the corresponding solutions are characteristic functions. Okay, so if you want to uh, see the example, just see the previous example. So here, for this example, this lambda n square, this n squares are your characteristic values, and this c n sine n uh, sine n x for each n you have this function. So this is your characteristic functions. Okay, uh, let's see an interesting theorem. What is this theorem? This theorem has basically three interesting results. So, if there exists, so what is this theorem states? This theorem states if you have an Stavlyov's boundary value problem, then there will be always infinite number of characteristic values. Okay, one thing, and another is this infinite number of characteristic values can be arranged in a way so that they can be written in monotonic increasing sequence. So, see, we have written. So, you can arrange this lambda such a way that you will try to, you will able to write them in this manner, and this lambda n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. This is the first result. Again, if you want to tally it with our examples, you can see there here your lambda is n square. 
okay so as n tends to infinity this goes to infinity and for n equal to 1 to 3 these are all monotonically increasing okay now let's see the second result corresponding to each characteristics value lambda n there exists a non parameter family of characteristics function that also we have seen in the last example also that that there was our uh, this uh, lambda, uh, phi n was c n sin n x each of this characteristics function is defined on this interval and any two characteristics function corresponding to the same characteristics values are non zero constant multiple of each other obviously for a particular lambda if uh, you you can get two uh, two different solution but they will be always multiple of each other since we have seen there is always a constant multiplication so constant multiplication like we have phi n equal to c n sin n x so this c n is constant so it can be any constant so obviously one can take one in place of c n another get one any one can take two so it is a fixed constant okay but this constant may vary uh, depending on the situation or your boundary conditions so if you each each of this characteristics function so when you have a characteristics function and if you take any constant multiple of the characteristics function that will be also be a characteristics function so for each characteristics function defined on this any two characteristics function corresponding to the same characteristics values are actually multiple of each other so for a particular characteristics value you will always have a characteristics function and if you take any constant multiple of this characteristics function that will also be a characteristics function for this characteristics value and this third result is for each characteristics function phi n corresponding to the characteristics value lambda n has exactly n minus 1 zeros in the open interval so in the last example we have seen let's see what we have how we can tally this theorem in, with the, our last example so this is this is what we have solved till now in the last example and this is your characteristics uh, values and this is your characteristics functions okay now this is your ex, uh, final solutions okay now the last theorem the third part of the theorem says that this phi n uh, if we equate it zero it has n minus 1 number of zero if you take phi 2 you will get on on zero if you take phi 3 you will get two zeros so phi n has n minus 1 number of zeros we have to prove that okay so this is our phi n from this for this example we are just uh, varying this theorems for a particular example we are not going in details proof of this theorems it is very complicated and out of scope for this uh, literature but we are only interested to uh, know about this theorem and understand them so then we can apply it further okay so this is your uh phi n if you equate with zero you will get c n sin n x equal to zero and this uh, implies n x equal to k pi or k is a constant any integers so these are in zero plus minus one you can take any values you will always get a solution for each x you will get a solutions so what is we have we have x equal to k pi uh, by n now we all we will know that whatever value you take is a multiple of pi k is a multiple of pi okay so when n crosses so if you put just value of n plus 1 here it will obviously lead to pi plus pi by n okay so it will repeat its value it is a circle, circle so this is uh, in 12 standard when you solve this trigonometric uh, functions we know that it's it's just repeat its values okay so after is uh, cycle so how many different solution you will get you will get for x equal to this for 1 2 3 n minus 1 when you will put n you will get for you will get the same value of x when you will put n uh, in place of k so basically k equal to 1 putting the value of k equal to 1 and putting the value of k equal to n as same for this trigonometric they are they are different as a x they are different but you will put when they will put they will produce the same things okay so basically there are this many roots okay so th that's why so this function has actually n minus 1 number of zeros so this is we can verify from this example okay so let's understand what is normalized function 
so we are just trying to uh, read or trying to recall some of our knowledge so that we can use it so normalized function is the definition we are just recalling here what is the normalized function if you uh, integrate so this is a domain of definition of the function now if we integrate with respect to the domain of definition with respect to n multiplied by some weight this rx is a known function weight okay so a function f is called normalized with respect to the weight function r on this domain of definition if and only if this equal to 1 okay so in general maybe uh, most of us have seen that rs generally we take rs equal to 1 but uh, it may be more than uh, any any function of x rather than a constant 1 so this is the general definition of normalized function next what is orthogonal systems so suppose you have this sequence of infinite this set of infinite functions and this they are they will be set orthogonal if if you again my in, uh, calculate this integration and for m and n m not equal to m if it leads to 0 and for m equal to n then it leads to 1 so we will say it's an orthonormal so if it only the first party for different phi for different phi if you get 0 then we will say ortho gonal system and again uh, it, it will combine it with, with our uh, normal function definition of normal function where we, if we take m equal to n and it leads to 1 then we will say if you combine these two properties then we will say orthonormal function so there is two property one is one is this is orthogonal system and another is it is a normalized function okay so this is function is normalized and the system is orthogonal that means if you take any two different function and integrate with respect to this weight it will lead to zero so if you combine these two definition you will get this 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 definition under this integration for this different result when m not equal to n it will lead to zero when m equal to n it will lead to one uh, and then we will say this this set of function is a orthonormal set of functions now let's see how we can build orthogonal and then then orthonormal characteristics function so first we are trying to uh, create a orthonormal set of characteristics function we have already seen in the previous example that uh, uh, what are phi n's for particular exam so phi n is the characteristics function that means these are the solution of the uh, sturm liouville's boundary holy problem for each characteristics value lambda n so for each lambda n you have a phi n now if we multiply this phi n with a constant it will again be a characteristics functions for this phi n okay so that we have seen in the result 2 of our first theorem so this now uh, we are just multiplying this k n for each phi n we are multiplying with a constant so that this phi n becomes orthonormal uh, these are our characteristics function and after a slight modification this is our new characteristics function where we have multiplied each function with a constant k on k2 k3 etc and this k we have to find the values of k1 k2 and k3 in such a way that they become orthogonal okay so how we can find it okay so we want to make them orthogonal so that's why we will use this definition so first we are trying to make him them normal okay first we are trying to make them normal so you are just taking two uh, uh, repeating same uh, functions and with respect to so as per the definition of uh, normal function this should become on okay so when this will this integration will become on so suppose this integration is greater than 0 but it is not equal to 1 okay so this it will give you some uh, real uh, value it will give, lead you some uh, value and suppose this value is k n okay now if we just uh, divide by this since this is a non zero you we can divide it so if you divide by this the right side will become on and this is our new functions okay so this is actually our constant now if you take this as a constant so what is k k n k n is basically this integration okay so this is the modification so if we modify this the whole uh, system of characteristics functions will become orthonormal set with respect to r okay so now 
as we have learned about normal functions then orthonormal functions and then we have learned how we can uh, make our characteristics function orthonormal by slightly modifying that now we are going to use all this knowledge uh, in this form of a theorem so suppose this lambda n be infinite set of characteristics values and you have uh, and we can we can write them in monotonically increasing sequence as we have seen in the first theorem and this is your phi n is the corresponding orthonormal characteristics function we are assuming these are orthonormal so if you don't have orthonormal you can always make them orthonormal by multiplying some constant that you have seen so after multiplying we assume this is a final orthonormal set of characteristics functions okay and th this point 2 let a be a function with continuous interval so this a has some properties we'll see why these properties are required okay then we are saying a can be written in this form of this series where this cn is given by these functions okay so obviously if you try to calculate this cn so since they are orthogonal so we can use the property of orthogonal so from there you will get this okay uh, so except except if you multiply by phi n except this cn all the other coefficient will vanish uh, as they are orthogonal so you will left with this this is very easy now why we need these properties of this function so that this integral becomes well defined so the function f which is continuous on the interval so it should be continuous and has a piecewise continuous derivative f dash on this b and such that f of a equal to 0 if phi 1 a equal to 0 and f of b equal to 0 if this so if if this is zero then we record this condition if this is zero then we record this this condition if f is non zero at a and non zero at b then we don't need to worry about this conditions we when we'll prove this if we try to prove this we'll see this will help you to prove and first it have to be continuous because this have to be well defined so whenever you see since so we are putting some restriction for some particular function we will always try to find out why because we need this property so that we can prove the result or we are going to use it okay so this is an important theorem which leads to one important application that any continuous function with these properties can be expand in this form of a series okay so this looks like similar to our Fourier series knowledge so from here we get the idea of Fourier series actually so next we see this is a definition of Fourier series whatever we have seen in the last theorem so let this is be say orthonormal system with respect to a weight function r in this interval and if a function a be a function such that with product this is integrable so see this is integrable this should be integrable so that's why we need all those good properties of the function here they didn't write all these good property of function they have directly written this is integrable that's enough okay so that this product so the function a b such the way that this should be integrable so it help us out so that we don't mention all these uh, properties which are lengthy or uh, difficult to understand in initially difficult to understand okay so this series so f can be written in this form of series where uh, the coefficients are given in this form and this series is called actually Fourier series and these coefficients are called Fourier constants if you write uh, if you take this phi n in the form of your known Fourier constants Fourier functions that is cos and sine then it will become our known trigonometric Fourier series so what we have seen today we have seen what is uh, stam lewis bound value problem how we can solve it and what how we can define characteristics function and characteristics uh, values from the solution of stam lewis bound value problem and how it help us to create a set of infinite orthogonal functions and which leads to create uh, fourier uh, series expansion of a known function so with this summary uh, we again thank you all for uh, giving you a precious time. Namaskar.